Hey eBay sellers, it's Suzanne A. Wells. Thanks for coming back for another video. And this is video number 290. And I wanted to go over a trash to cash item that some of you may not be aware of. I do see a lot of you lamenting over whether or not to sell something that's damaged. And I really want to push you out of your comfort zone there and challenge you to try doing this because things don't have to be perfect to sell on eBay. Um, there's all kind of reasons that people buy imperfect things, parts of items, they repurpose things, they upcycle them, and this is one product that you can make good money selling, especially if you live where you can find this. And um, you know, I'm in Georgia and I find this all the time. So let's talk a little bit about cashmere and upcycling and how you can make money selling sweaters, uh, cashmere sweaters with damage, holes, all that um, on eBay. So a little bit of a backstory as I always give. Um, Cashmere is harvested from the cashmere goat. Um, due to extremely cold winters, these goats have developed a coarse hair that protects them. So the cashmere used in clothing is the underlayer of the wool, and it's more like hair. Cashmere originated in Mongolia in 3rd century BC, and heav heavy trading of cashmere started around the 1800s, and they used the old silk routes from China and Mongolia to Europe to trade this fabric. It's also called Pashim or Pashima, which is Persian for wool. So you may see that on eBay. You will see that on eBay, uh, Pashima scarves. It just means they're made of cashmere. I wouldn't put that word in your title necessarily because most Americans are an English speaking people are going to be searching for cashmere, not Pashim or Pashima, but if you see that, you'll know what it is. Cashmere is considered a luxury fabric because of its fine texture, strength, lightness, and softness. There's nothing warmer or more insulating. And once you get to know what this is and you feel it, and you, you'll start to recognize it by feel, um, you will absolutely know when you have it. Now some of the blends may fool you, acrylic may fool you, but it is not the same as cashmere. Cashmere is eight times warmer than wool and much softer. 100% cashmere is the most desirable. So you wanna make sure that the tag, the 100% cashmere tag is on the item. You cannot assume that it's cashmere just because you think it is or it feels like it because how are you gonna prove it to your buyer? They'll get it and they'll say, well, no, this is acrylic, this is a blend, and you have no proof. So um, I would not try to sell it unless it has that the garment label in it. And what's frustrating is you will find it, you will know you'll have it, and you go to look for the tag and someone has cut it out. And it's just like, so sad, too bad, can't sell it because you don't want your buyer to question you. And there are buyers out there that will get things, they won't see the content tag and they will question you and open a case against you. So just don't do it. Now, what makes cashmere so expensive? The underlayer must be carefully combed out by hand. It's a labor intensive process. So here we've got some people in Asia that are raising their cashmere goats and this is what they do during harvesting time is they sit there with a comb and comb it out because there's two layers. There's a thick overlayer that's called guard hairs and then there's the soft underlayer which is what uh, clothing, blankets, scarves, gloves, all that stuff is made out of. Now here's where it gets expensive. It takes one of these goats four years to produce enough cashmere for one sweater. So this is something that is low in supply. It is not like wool. It is not like um, you know rabbit hair, those types of things. Um, wool is, is mass produced you could get so much of it off of a sheep at one time. It is not like that with cashmere. Um, and don't get cashmere confused with angora or mohair. Those are, are lower quality fibers from um, another kind of goat and rabbits. You want 100% cashmere if you're going to be selling um, it damaged. 
Now, cashmere can be one, two, three, or four ply. The higher the number it is, the more expensive it is because it's thicker. Three and four ply cashmere is rare and more common in vintage sweaters. I have found a few three and four ply in my career on eBay since 2003, and they do sell for a lot of money. I found one a couple years ago, and it was a men's sweater. Uh, cardigan it had pockets it was an extra large so it was a lot it was big um, and I hand washed it which you should always do with cashmere I'll do another video on that but um, it took almost three days to dry and you know drying it air drying it because it was so thick so you will know you'll be able to feel the difference and those can go for more money because there's so much more cashmere made into it. You will see it on the on the tag. If it doesn't say, then it's one ply. Otherwise, it will say on the tag just like this. So two ply is more expensive if you're selling just a sweater on its own. Make sure that you put two ply in the title and when you look up your comps on completed listings, look at two ply, not one ply because there is a bit of a price difference. Again, never put cashmere in the washing machine. Always hand wash it. It is a delicate fabric. Um, you could have it dry cleaned, but hand washing is definitely the way to go. It will ruin, it will come apart, it will be misshapen if you put it in the washing machine. So hand wash. Now, moths love cashmere as well, so you want to store it in plastic bags or a cedar chest to avoid moth damage. After you've listed an item, you should wrap it in plastic simply because anything can get into it after you have listed it, no matter where you're storing it. Um, I, I put everything in plastic bags, um, seal them up with tape, and then put them in my clear bins. But dust can get in there, animal hair, um, insects, you know, anything can get in there and you don't want anything happening to your inventory. So if you look at how the big companies do it, they store all their stuff in plastic. When you order something from Kohl's or L.L. Bean or Land's End or anything in, you, in its clothing, it will come in some kind of plastic and then inside a poly mailer. So follow what the big guys do. They know what they're doing. Okay, so to the point of this video, damaged cashmere has value on eBay. Crafters use it to make other things. They could either cut it apart into sections or unravel it and use it for yarn to knit and to start over making something from scratch. So you can sell damaged cashmere in lots called cutters. And I have found that cutter lots do best when organized by color because you may have someone working on a specific project like in this case there's all this pink. Um, it could be you know someone's making a baby blanket for a baby girl so they want the pink. I have just found that it's better to organize your lots by color. So let me tell you a little dog story before I go on because I do like to explain how I figure out how to do these things. Back when I first started selling on eBay in the early 2000s, um, I really sold a lot of cashmere because um, it sold well. And yes, this, this dog looks like my little dog Bailey who we sent to doggy heaven last year but um, anyway <laughs> um, so I, I had a sweater for sale um, and I was listing it and I found a hole in it and then I started finding all these other holes and I'm like oh great this is just not worth anything I've wasted my money so I like well I'm just gonna put it up on eBay anyway and just see what happens because that's what I do I experiment I'm like I'm just gonna try it and see what happens so I put it on auction starting at like three dollars whatever I paid for it and it was a nice bright red sweater it was a big size and um, there were some bids on it and it sold for like 25 or 30 dollars and the lady who won it emailed me and she said do you have any more damaged sweaters and I was like um, well I could definitely find some for you <laughs> So I emailed her back and I said, well, I, I come across them all the time. Why, why would you want them? And this was before the whole repurposing craze. So she's like, oh, I have a business where I go to craft shows and craft fairs and I make 
dog sweaters out of cashmere um, sweaters. I find damaged cashmere and you know make the sweaters out of them but I'm getting older it's getting harder to get out there and do it I love making the sweaters it's just finding the materials to make them is getting harder and um, she's like I thought I would come to eBay and, and start buying it this way and I was like oh that is a fabulous idea I'm gonna start I'm gonna start doing that on purpose so listen to your customers when something unusual happens or you want to ask them why you know phrase it in a professional way of that you know hey I'm I noticed you bought this and I'm just curious why I'm trying to expand my business and serve customers better and I would love to know the reason behind this so that I could find more of this item to offer on eBay and you know just say it like that and see if they tell you because you don't know what's going on in the mind of a buyer until you ask them you can't assume you have to ask and they're just people like us so you know they might answer so anyway this was a lot I sold a few months ago it was seven sweaters uh, three pounds and actually these I buy if I can get them for a dollar or less or if it's something I got home and I just didn't see a hole in it instead of just throwing it away or trying to sell one sweater damaged I put it into lots so part of this is intentional part of this is salvaging what um, I made mistakes on and yes I make mistakes just like you guys so everybody does um, another way you want to sell these is by the pound so what I do is get one of those big UPS boxes the 8 by 12 by 12 I think and I I just start filling it up with these sweaters and once it gets full um, I create a lot so I do intentionally buy these when I can get them cheap enough. I would never pay the full six dollars at Goodwill for a sweater to put in a lot. I would never do that. Um, if it was damaged I would fix it myself and then resell it on its own. But this is for the scraps, the um, you know the mistakes when I buy something or if I am somewhere that everything's a dollar and I see something with a hole in it I will intentionally make a lot. So you want to fashion your lots around how you're going to ship it when that box gets full um, or if you want to separate out them by color then you know you've already got an organized system there so your next question is why do people buy this what are they making and you can go on Etsy and Pinterest and find all kinds of stuff that people are making with repurposed cashmere so the way you want to look at this is these lots are a raw material for crafters to make what they need think about it if your skill if your gift is making stuff from scratch knitting um, crocheting you know making these things which that is totally not my gift um, if your gift is that you don't want to spend your time looking for your raw materials you know maybe some people do enjoy that going to the thrift store and like hoping they'll find what they need but it's much faster for them especially if they have a business reselling handmade items it's much faster for them to go buy their raw material in this case damaged cashmere in lots on eBay they can pick out exactly what they need to make their project buy it have it at their door in a couple of days and get back into doing what they love where their energy is going which is into creating these wonderful items they either keep sell give as gifts whatever so just a few examples um, these are some little booties made out of cashmere you'll see a lot of this on Pinterest and Etsy the blankets that are made of different colors because that seems to be an easy thing to do you don't have to have all of one color to make a great big blanket and, and just imagine how soft and luxurious a blanket like this would be um, these things are just beautiful I really have great respect for anyone that can make these crafts um, I've got a video coming up on <laughs> my Martha Stewart phase and some things I learned there but um, here's a scarf that's made with a rainbow pattern with lots of different colors and then this hat is obviously a uh, sweater that may be a fair isle sweater that someone cut apart and made this hat and then you've got things like pillows um, all kinds of home decor you know the list goes on and on so 
really what I'm doing in this video is just trying to educate you about things you might have that you think are trash and they're not. Um, let's go to eBay real quick and look at some completed listings. The words I put in here are cashmere cutter lot and we've got 81 results um, and actually if we take out the word lot we may even get more than that because not everyone puts lot in their title. Well, why is this not? I think my internet is stuck. Um, anyway, you can see that some of these lots go for quite a bit of money. Um, here's a 43 piece lot of 100% cashmere sweaters, cutter fabric, $111. Um, here's a very brightly colored lot. This is 12. Oh, I hate it when that happens. Um, maybe we'll get that back in a minute. Anyway, um, the point is over on eBay at the completed listings, you will see all kinds of configurations of lots. It, you know, it's, it's whatever you want to do, but um, they do go for a lot of money. And I challenge you to give that a try and see if you can make some money doing that. You want to have, I would say, at least four items, four sweaters in a lot before you, you put it up for sale. Um, it's hard to say an average price per sweater because it's it's so all over the board. It's about the desired colors. Um, also, I show the brands of the, the different sweaters in there because some brands are much higher quality than others, uh, like TSE Cashmere. Um, Brunello Cuccinelli is a huge, oh, very, very high end. I've only found a couple of those, and I would, I would probably just sell that one damaged. They're worth so much. But um, the key is that you want to make a big enough lot for someone who needs to make a project. So anyway, um, I hope that was some new information for you. Um, again, this is this is like an experiment on your part. There's no specific formula to exactly how to sell damaged cashmere just go look on eBay and see what other people are doing and that's really your answer to a lot of this stuff that's new to you when you you know how do I do this how do I do that um, go find somebody on eBay who's already doing it that's the best way to learn something and be successful find someone who's already doing it and then model your listing or your business after them so we love your comments on this. Are you doing this? Are you a person who makes things out of damaged cashmere? I'd love to hear from you if you have any good information for us who are selling the cashmere as a raw material, better ways that we can sell it to you, better better ways um, we can serve you so that you can buy these item, uh, cashmere to make your items. So thank you for watching and have a great day on eBay. Bye.